They didn't have black stunt guys. They didn't know. I had done a show previous where they'd taken one of the Caucasian crew members and put a cap on him and painted him black, and he was stunt doubling, you see. And they did a couple of the stunts, and I had to go back and duplicate it because it just didn't uh, fit. Well, I did the slide. The nurse on the set, oh my God, look at here, because when I stood down through the grass, there was all these rocks in the grass. And I had scratches on my back. It looked like they were somebody taking a rake to my back. And I said, don't worry about it. We've got to keep moving. This is costing us $50,000 a damn hour as we're standing around here debating on whether I'm going to get hurt or not. I'm not going to get hurt, and if I do, I don't care. Let's keep moving. We've got to keep moving. You know, this is our reputation here. And I'm just starting. This is my first guest. I, you know, I'm running the show already. I don't even know it. So 30 years later, I get a phone call from Warner Brothers. Don, get over to Warner Brothers now. Mr. Leonard Kaufman wants to see you. Oh, God, I'm in deep trouble here. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. So I go over there, and Leonard says to me, he said, you know, Don, I never forgot what you did for us that day and saved both of our careers. I said, wow. He said, listen, they have a character on Dukes of Hazard. It was called Sheriff Lucas. But they want to put dialogue to it, 
and I've suggested that you come in and give them a reading. I said, oh, oh, okay, well, sure. I'm a professional, and I'm going to protect what you've done for me. So I have to go meet Paul Picard, like, the next day, I think. And I'm dressed in cowboy boots and my dark pants and a gray shirt and a leather jacket and a string tie and a cowboy hat. And I had a full beard in those days and I said, well, the object of Sheriff Little is kind of to scare everybody. You know, to, everybody's afraid of Sheriff Little and what he can do. So I'm in the outer office with the secretary and I'm talking and laughing and so forth. And she said, Mr. Picard wants to see you now. I just my hat, got to the door, took a deep breath, and I boom in the room and slammed the door and just stand there real quiet. Now many producers, and we face this many, many times, you go to see these people and their game is you're standing there all nervous, ready to go to work, giving, they're still writing and they're writing and doing a telephone. And away after a while I look up and say, Oh yeah, oh yeah. What was your name? Who are you? What are you here for? <laughs> and Picard tried to pull that on me, see, and I'm standing there just ice cold, all Sheriff Little is just, every pore of my body is filled with room. And he's writing, see, and suddenly he stops on the right and he looks up at me, <laughs> and he looks at me and he says, uh, 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 you're here to read Sheriff Little? He didn't say a thing, not a thing. And, and, and now he's shuffling paper and his pan rolls up on the floor. Come <laughs> on. I'm not trying to keep from laughing, but I got this, oh, I'm really crushing on it. And now he says, well, uh, uh, you're here to read this script? I didn't see anything. I'm just all behind my dark glasses here. <laughs> uh, well, you want to read it now? I'm waiting on him. <clears throat> oh, okay. <clears throat> we'll start out here. Uh, read this first line. Oh, I gave it to him. And he's looking for his part now. He's lost his part. And he's supposed to respond to me. <laughs> we go on and on through the thing. And the dialogue comes upon a uh, uh, thing that says, Sheriff Little uh, is being told this big lie by Boss Hogg. And he has a shotgun and he cocks his shotgun, his emphasis, to the lies. And I said, well, I don't have a shotgun in the producer's office. You can't there go out walk around. So I said, if you focus the sound of cow chips just right, it can sound like you're cocking a shotgun. Cow chips. Cow chips. <laughs> so it came up on the line and I went, cow chips. Paul Picard came right up out of his chair about that part. Boom. <laughs> and he looked at me and, oh, oh man, way after a while he's coming and fumbling. He says, well, thank you. I I thank you for the audition, that'll be enough. I said, oh, thank you, Mr. Picard. I took off my hat. And I was doing work, shaking his hand. And he's still looking at me like, I'm going to reach out and... <laughs> so I left the office, and I know had sooner gotten outside of his office that the telephone rang for the secretary, and she said, it's Mr. Leonard. He wants you to come over and talk to him. So I went over and said, thank you, and so forth. And while I'm in Leonard's office, the phone rings again, and they said, be ready to go to work tomorrow morning. The script is on your way. <laughs> and you get here uh, later this afternoon and you go to costume and they'll make you up your costume and so forth. And the rest is the rest of the story. <laughs>